today we're taking a three-day wear test look at the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. Now I included this in a recent video that I will do a link here for. This was my most recent Sephora haul and I included that here. And by the way, with these links, you just hit it and it will bring you to that. And then what I usually do is I put it on pause and then I finish watching the video I'm watching and then I go to the new window and watch that in, in case you didn't know. So that will give you first impressions. Now I've worn it for three days and this is the third day. And I'm going to take you through each application. I have a different sunscreen on each day. I'm using my fingers, I'm using a sponge, I'm using two different brushes, all slightly different. And I also had to make some shade adjustment and we'll, we'll talk about the shades as well. Before we get started though, oh, consider giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps send my videos out to other people and it helps the channel a lot and I appreciate it if you would do it. Also, let's talk about my skin because I didn't talk about it in that video and it's super important to understand the skin of the person you're listening to and what their preferences are. My preferences for something that is a little bit radiant and skin-like, I don't care for matte all that much, but I like something more skin-like. I'm 59 years old, I will be 60 oh, really soon. My skin isn't dry per se, I don't have flaky bits of skin, but it doesn't produce oils very much at all anymore. I'm not producing elastin and collagen and hyaluronic acid and oils and all the good stuff that keeps skin looking plump and youthful. I'm not producing that so much. I'm very sensitive and very aware of things that are drying. I can just tell when you feel your skin tightening up, it's drying. You put something on that's drying. So I have a wonderful skincare routine and I will post it here. This is from probably last December, and that's pretty much, I've had a couple of changes, but that's pretty much how I prep my skin. Now, let us talk about what they are saying about this foundation. What it is, a weightless liquid foundation that delivers buildable medium coverage with light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours. Medium coverage, natural finish, liquid. We already went through that. Highlighted ingredients, light diffusing pigments, deliver a natural soft focus finish and help protect against blue light. Blurring spears minimizes the look of imperfections, fine lines and wrinkles. White tea extract, vitamin E and antioxidants. Callouts, free of parabens, contains less than 1% synthetic fragrance. It's vegan it's gluten-free, and it's cruelty-free. What else you need to know? Inspired by the iconic Ambient Lighting Collection. That's their beautiful powders that really do have a blurring effect. This foundation is infused with blurring spheres to minimize the look of imperfections. We've already gone through that. I'm just going to briefly not going to mention all the ingredients because a lot of long words but we're going to just say a lot of dimethicones and silicones in here. Water is the first ingredient, but I wouldn't say this is a water-based foundation. Glycerin is the fourth ingredient. Glycerin is a skin identical and it's hydrating. And then we have more things I can't pronounce, things that end with cones and zanes. And these are all things that are emulsifiers and carriers and, and that kind of good stuff. And then, more than halfway down, we have tocopherol, that's vitamin E. So it's not high up there. Continue going down and right before titanium dioxide and iron oxides are tocopherol, which is vitamin E, and camellia leaf extract which is green tea, in this case, white tea, which is an antioxidant. So the beneficials that they are using as selling points are pretty far down in here. 
So let's uh, get into it. I think I covered everything. All the makeup that I'm wearing for each day will be linked below. You know about my skin type. You know about my preference. We're using cream products and we're using powder products to see how it meshes. I'm using at least two and maybe three different concealers. I'm using two different powders and three different sunscreens. Let's get into day one. This was the day that I used the footage of for my Sephora haul. So I'm going to keep it kind of short. So I was editing this yesterday and I found that the file was corrupt from the video that I posted with my Sephora haul when I first used this. So let us just say that I used this brush, the Sonia G brush, um, on half the face. And I didn't really like it. I felt that the brush took a lot of the foundation inside, soaked it all up. On the other side I did fingers. On both sides I finished with Beauty Blender. And the products that I used on top were no issues at all with them. It wore for the entire day. I probably wore it for, I don't remember, a long time. And it wasn't a problem. Now, before we get into day two, I just forgot to mention something about my skin. Foundations last for a long time on me. I am not that person who has issues with it breaking up around my nose or on my chin. If something does that to me, there's really, really a problem. But at the end of the day, it looked just as nice. In fact, for me, oftentimes, I like my foundation better after it's been on for several hours and it just kind of warms up with the skin and synchronizes and looks more skin-like, which this has the potential to do if not for the horrid color. Now let's get into day two. Alright you guys, today is day two. Let me first tell you about day one. Day one was a different video which I put some of that footage in, hopefully. We'll see what happens. Of course I will. And yesterday I did the Make Prem sunscreen. And this one is like a watery sunscreen. It is very hydrating, but it's not slippy. I didn't wash this off until about 15 hours later. I took a hike and it seemed fine afterwards. I feel like it is long wear, but it's important to tell you that most things are on me. Color is an issue. I, I don't feel that they've made an improvement in the color. So today, I'm going to put in some of the Chanel Leblanc, which is what I do when I want to lighten something up. And that will help me a lot because if I'm very distracted by the color, I can't really look at the performance. I will say, after I shot the video, I, I'm gonna do two pumps, by the way. And again, it has a, a little bit of a thickness. It's running a little bit but the consistency is very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. As the day went on, whenever I look in the mirror, I thought, looks pretty, looks pretty. I'm gonna start with one pump of the LeBlanc, and that's what they look like together, and just mix it up. So that's what I have. And again, even though it's lighter, I think you can still see this really isn't neutral. It looks quite golden to me. Today, I'm using a different sunscreen. I am using the Tatcha Mineral, and this has set up for 15 minutes. And my preference for foundation is always fingers. It just is. I just don't love using brushes. And I don't mind finishing with a beauty blender, but it's rare that I do full application with a beauty blender. So that's what it looks like. I think it looks very pretty on the skin. I just cannot get over this color though. It's very hard for me to speak about what it looks like when I'm just feeling extraordinarily orange. So I'm going to turn off the camera and do my eyes, which is what I normally do. So this can kind of set up and synchronize with the skin for five, 10 minutes while I do my eyes and then go on with some powder products and see how they work. So that is what we're going to do right now. Now I'm going to go on with my Lancome Tint Adol in 215 under the eyes. I did get 
the foundation under my eyes and honestly I really really don't mind a foundation under the eyes. I don't necessarily want something super bright under my eyes and I would say the coverage is fairly decent. So if you are someone who you can't be bothered, you, you know, you need to put something under your eyes because of the discoloration but you don't care, you're fine with your foundation color under your eyes, it works very nicely under the eyes. It doesn't crease or get cakey and the coverage is fairly decent. So. You know, I thought that was notable. And the palette I'm using is the Wayne Goss. I think it's the Pearl palette. So that worked out well. I'm just going to let that set up a little bit before I powder under the eyes. And let's do ourselves a powder blush. So can't read this again below. It is a Pat McGrath. It could be Divine Rose. This is a very soft brush and I'm not getting any pull at all. It's not that this is dry to the touch, you guys, but if you use a very soft brush and hardly touch, you still get your product on your face. Super, super nice. And I would say it probably took me five, ten minutes to do my eyes. But if I went in with something heavier, if I went in with a goat, probably a little bit pull, and maybe you would want to powder your face first. But for me, I don't feel like I'm incredibly shiny. And I had the same experience yesterday, even though I used this, which is more of a shiny product. It's not matte by any means, but I do feel that I have other combos that leave the skin so shiny that I really need to powder it down, and I'm not getting that with this. It's a nice radiance, but not too shiny. Let's do some powder bronzing and contouring. Charlotte Tilbury Bronze and Glow, I find this color is really nice for contouring, and I just use the tip of this SuQ brush. I think it's SuQ. And there's just, there's no pulling, there's no um, weirdness going on here at all. Same brush with the Victoria Beckham Bronzing Brick. Now, this foundation, <laughs> not uh, my actual color. I will oftentimes go in with this color, but uh, I think I'm going to go in with this color, or uh, I'm going to mix them. I don't necessarily need to be super bronze because this color is darker than me and much warmer than me. It looks beautiful. I do love that Victoria Beckham. I would say there's a little bit of wetness to the brush and I was a little bit more aggressive. Not really aggressive, but you know what I mean? Went a little bit harder with that brush. So I think I'm gonna be cleaning that. And now let's go in with some powder as usual by Terry. I just like to powder right here, a little bit on the chin. I'm fine with the sheen on the side of my face. It just, to me, it's a very healthy kind of look. A little bit on the center, a little bit of troughing, not too bad. And just a little bit to get rid of any sheen. And that's kind of today's look. Oh, I'm going to try this again. This is from the video where I did my first look. Nice. It's funny. I thought this had a warmness to it. This is a bit of a chameleon kind of color. And again, this is what I used in that video where I did the hourglass for the first time. So I think the skin looks very pretty. I had no problem with any of the powder products, no problem with the Lancome concealer. And it's, it's very, very pretty. So I'm just going to kind of turn a little bit so you can see what's going on, pull you in while I'm doing it. It looks very, very nice on the skin. I will say, formula-wise, it's very similar to things that we've been seeing this year. Uh, you are sick to death of me talking about this, but this. Also, I don't have it on the table here, but the Nucosis foundation, which also had a very difficult color range, and I ended up 
with three bottles and mixed all together. Really, really nice. I do find that the Kosas can be a little bit dry. You have to prep pretty well. This one, I didn't change my prep yesterday and I didn't change my prep today. I just used a different sunscreen. This one by Tatcha is very dimethicone -y. and I know that a lot of people like a dimethicone sunscreen. So we're going to see how this uses, how this wears with a dimethicone based sunscreen versus this and tomorrow when I'll give this the you know third day I'll let you know what happened today. I do think it looks very very pretty. I do think the shade range is not working for me which is not new for Hourglass. I was just kind of hopeful that maybe they listen to people. <laughs> some companies do, some companies don't. All right, day two and stay tuned for day three. So that was day two. This actually was my favorite day out of all three days and I think it was because of the sunscreen. So the sunscreen I used was the Tatcha, which is very dimethicone and this foundation is very dimethicone and while I was editing it, I kept on thinking, wow, save for the color. And because I pulled it down my neck and brought my shirt up, you probably couldn't tell that the color was very, very wrong for me. I thought the skin looks very, very pretty. I think that this paired with the Dimethicone sunscreen, big thumbs up. Now, let's do a little voiceover for day three. Day All right, you guys, today, day three, I took yesterday off because I needed to run some errands. <laughs> and yeah, wasn't gonna be running errands with that color on my face. But I will say, it remained comfortable all day long. Today, I'm wearing a different sunscreen. This is the Isntree Watery Sun Gel. My favorite kind of formula has words like watery or sun gel in them. And this one leaves me a little bit more shiny, as you can see, than some of my other sunscreens. And I thought we'd give that a try. I still really would prefer to break this up with <laughs> my Chanel, just for the sake of color. So I'm going to do a one-to-one -one pump ratio. So this is a Cap on D brush that is actually for powder. And I'm barely touching the skin. And Hintosh, I've seen Hintosh use this as a foundation brush, which is why I bought it. And hopefully you can see by how my skin isn't really moving, what a light, light touch I am using for blending this in. So it's not like, so, you know, really pushing everything in. So this is a pretty application. There's still tons left pick up with the brush and bring the color down a little bit so it doesn't look so disjointed. So lighter coverage with this application. I think it's possible there's a little bit more shine which makes sense because my sunscreen had a lot more shine. So let's go ahead and do another concealer. If you know what I'm going to do, I haven't used this. This is the Anastasia in a long, long time because this color is a little off too. And I guess I'll just put it on my lids as well as a primer. And I'm going to go in with this brush because um, my beauty blender is not damp. Boy, that Anastasia really has coverage, right? I'm going to go ahead and do my eyes and then we'll come back and we'll try a couple of other products and, and see how they work together. All right, I've done my brows, I've done my eyes, and I will list everything that I am using down below. I did put a little bit powder here, my By Terry powder, but I thought I wouldn't go in with the Kosas because the By Terry doesn't actually have any color to it, and we'll see how that works because maybe this will help. At the very least, I can get the area in the center of my face a little bit lighter. So this video will not just be about the foundation, but also little tips on how to make something work that doesn't work. So we're going to do Couchette from Westman Atelier. I'm going to put it on my hand and pick it up and transfer it that way.
So this is the Westminster Atelier Nectar, which is so pretty. So I kind of have a warm-ish blush and a warm-ish highlighter to go with the coolish eye for a little bit of tension. And this I'm going to pick up with my finger. So pretty. And the Victoria Beckham Bitten Lit Temp in Amour. Hair down, and this is the final look. So for today, um, my conclusions are, again, I don't like the way it looks on the forehead. I can't really explain it. And it, I, it, it could be me. It could be me, but I just want to give you all the information that I have. It doesn't feel drying. And it powders down very nicely. So while the sunscreen that I used was very shiny today, when I went over with the Kosas, it really mattified it, which is interesting because oftentimes after I use a sunscreen like that, I will put on some powder and three or four minutes later, I'll get a little bit of a sheen back and I'm getting a teeny, teeny bit of a sheen, but not as much as I usually do on my forehead anyway, on my cheeks a little bit more. It works well with other products. I just don't think I really like it. And part of it could be the color. It's very hard if you are just jarred by the color of something. It's very hard to recognize, is what I'm not liking on my skin actually the foundation itself? Or is it the color of the foundation? I'm aware that the color is wrong, but I really don't know how much that is affecting my overall feelings of what is going on here. So I need to put that out to you because I'm not a computer. <laughs> and I, I can't hit that cancel button. I try, but I'm taking in all the data at one time. So um, now let's go into conclusions. Now I'm not wearing it today, you guys. I'm, I'm back to wearing <laughs> this which is a good color match for me. I'm just gonna show you how these relate to each other. And I did do that little match search thing on the Sephora site, and they said, this is the color for me. This is a Charlotte Tilbury, and this is the Hourglass. I would say, between the two, the formulas are kind of similar. Yes, this is glass and this is plastic, but <laughs> they're both a little bit creamy. I would say their texture is incredibly similar. Once you apply them, this one can remain a teeny bit tacky. This one also remains a teeny bit tacky, but maybe a little bit less so. This one, I almost always feel that I have to powder it, and I have powdered it today. I still have a nice little sheen on my forehead, with this one, I didn't feel that I had to powder, and I don't think I did powder on the first day. And when I do powder with this one, oftentimes after I powder with this or most of my other foundations, the sheen comes back. And it's probably because it's the By Terry, where it's, you know, I'm matte for a second and then the sheen comes back. I found that this accepted powder in a different way. I did still have a skin-like finish, but it wasn't as shiny as with my other foundations. So it responds very nicely to powder. I would say that the wear time is the same between both of them, I, but again, I'm somebody who doesn't have an issue with wear time. Let's talk about some of their claims. They say that it's long wearing. I would say that it is. They say that it has these spears that, you know, blur imperfections, maybe. I was so thrown aback by the color that I really had a hard time discerning, you know, oh, this is the color that's bothering me, not what it's doing to my skin. I thought it looked better from here to here than it did on my forehead, and I'm not sure why. But I'm not liking my forehead all that much today either, so this could actually be my own thing. Maybe I'm dehydrated or, you know, could be could be anything. So they have light diffusing pigments and blurring spears. I think they're kind of the same thing. 
I will say that I do have that Clay de Poe foundation, Radiant Foundation that came out, I think around November, December, January, February, March. And that, when you put that on, you just, you can tell it does something to your skin. I'm not sure that this does. It, it might, because it really did look pretty on the cheeks. I also feel that this has more coverage than this. So you can try to build this, but I don't think you have to try all that hard to build this. On the last day, I applied this with this brush, right? And one pump mixed in with the LeBlanc, and I got coverage that was more similar to what I get out of this. So I think this coverage is more buildable than this one. I feel that if you think that this is a little too tacky or you need a little bit more coverage, you might really, really like this. I feel that if your skin is more normal versus dry, you may prefer this. But I have to tell you, as someone whose skin is on the drier side, I didn't find this to be drying, but I also you know, I do a lot of skincare, and I always put on a sunscreen, and I just never had issues over the three or four days that I wore this, feeling like my skin was tight, it didn't look dehydrated, and it didn't feel dry. Other people have different experiences, but that's my experience. And I think that's about it, you guys. It's for me, I'm not going to run out and look for a better color for me, because I like this so much. Even though I do feel there's a little bit more coverage in this one, it's almost 60 bucks, and I just, not for me. I have a lot of foundations. Foundations are like blind dates. It's, oh my god, not another one. Just another one gonna break my heart with the colors, or with, you know, claims that aren't really going to happen, or it's going to make my skin dry, or dehydrated looking, or it's going to itch. and. It just is a heartbreaking experience, especially buying online. But just like a blind date, there's that, how do you know that's not gonna be the one? You have to make the effort because it could be the game changer. For me, this is not the game changer. It's not the blind date where I'm so angry, but it's the blind date where I'm like, okay, well, you know, could have stayed at home and watched reruns of anything and probably had a better time. <laughs> but that's, that's just me. You may love this, and apparently a lot of people do love it on Sephora. I don't know if they're younger or they have oily skin or what the situation is, but that is my experience. It's good. It has its good points for sure, but I'm not going to run out and get a better color because I have so many foundations that I do love. That's going to wrap it up, you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful. I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe and smart. Please give the video a thumbs up if you made it all the way to the end. Maybe you're here to see Lucy. And let's do that now. Lucy! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> what? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Ow.